Hey guys, this is Mike Tarala with Click. Here I will show you how to use the map chart object available in both the free ClickSense desktop and the full ClickSense platform. With the version 1.0 of ClickSense, there have been a few updates which I will also address. First, a bit of history. With ClickView, Click has relied on various techniques, extension objects, and our valued partner network to provide mapping and geospatial solutions. Though effective and proven, Using those approaches may not always be feasible for some. With ClickSense, we have now included a map chart object which can easily visualize location data. With the current version, ClickSense 1.0, data can be presented as points reflecting latitude and longitude on what is called a slippy map, as well as highlighted within boundaries or polygons. Each approach requires some small preparation steps that I will walk you through today, and they are fairly simple. Note that with subsequent releases of ClickSense, the map object will continually be approved upon, so please stay tuned for updates. Let's get started, and I'll show you how to create a point map first. Okay, to get started, I want to show you the data that I have available for these two types of maps. So the first one in this Excel file called sampledata.xls has a number of tabs with our different dimensions and measures. But in this particular tab here called C Comp, you can see we have latitude and longitude. So in order to use a point map, it's important to have uh, columns that contain latitude and longitude. So what we'll do here is go over to ClickSense Desktop, create a new app, we'll call it Points Map, click Create and Open. And then we'll go into our Quick Data Load, and we'll paste in the path to where my data is, and we'll select the sample data.xls file. And there you can see the different tables, including the CCOMP table that has my latitude and longitude. And we can click Load Data. So at this point, we can edit the sheet. And I'm going to show you two ways in which we can derive the geo key that's needed for the point map. The first approach is you can do that within your master items under Dimensions, create a new dimension. And we're going to create a single dimension with a simple function called geo make point and that takes in the latitude and the longitude as arguments. And that's all you need to do. Click Apply, and we'll call this one Geo Key, and add that dimension. Now that being said, it's available here to use within our chart object. The second approach is simply to go into the data load editor, and by doing so in the data load editor, where the data is loaded for your latitude and longitude, is simply just put in your geo make point function and then add your latitude and uh, longitude arguments as such as geo key and that's all you really need to do but since we added it as a master item I'm not going to do that here please note when you do it this way it puts it directly within the data model versus the master items so if we go to our chart object when we go to our uh, map chart object, then go to our master items, put on our geo key, you can see the points represented. So what we need to do now is just turn on the background, and we can do that by selecting the one option that is available, which is called a slippy map. A slippy map is a general term that refers to modern web maps, basically letting you zoom and pan around or what's being served up from a tile server. And we provide a number of those available. And the reason why we provide these where you have to uh, paste them in is because of the license agreement that is um, available for these types of free maps. So in order to put the URL in, you have to click this link here. This will bring you to a, a website where you have a variety of different uh, slippy map servers. The first one being the OpenStreetMap. You just type in or copy the URL for the PNG and then go back. And then the same thing for the attribution. The attribution is important because as part of the license agreement, you must display the uh, attribution string for the type of map that you're using. And we can paste that in right there as such. And by doing so, you can see it puts the attribution on the bottom. Okay, so that is using the point map. So here we have our latitude and longitude, which for me in my data is represented by uh, cities. Okay, so you don't always have to use uh, the geo key as well. So for example, if I just delete the point layer, as long as it's linked in that fashion, we can grab the city element and we dropped our cities onto there as well. And when you hover over one of these points, it'll display the, the city name 
as well. So keep that in mind when utilizing the point map that uh, you don't have to use just the geo key. You can use uh, another location value as long as it's represented by that latitude and longitude. Um, so another thing we want to do is we want to plot metrics. So let's go back to our fields list and let's grab our line price, which in this case is revenue or sales. And we'll summarize that. And you can see now the size of the bubbles changes. Uh, we can go to our appearance, colors, turn off uh, auto colors, and then choose a single color. You can choose to color it by dimension, or you can choose by measure. And by measure, it uses a uh, gradient or heat-like color scheme that shows you the largest or smallest values. Another thing you can do is within the layer section under point layer, you can choose your minimum and maximum um, bubble sizes. And that's what these uh, sliders do here. So you can choose what the maximum or minimum size for the bubble should be. Okay, so that is the example of utilizing uh, latitude and longitude for a point map.